Menzies Research Senior Centre Senior Fellow and Danube Institute Visiting Fellow Nick Cater. Nick, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Look, let's start with Fortescue because its green hydrogen fuel fantasy is over. Up to 700 jobs will go after Andrew Forrest pulled back from the company's goal of producing 15 million tonnes of green hydrogen a year by 2030. Nick Twiggy has pulled the plug. He could not deliver on his green dream. What does that suggest? Well, look, he's woken up to reality, Danita, and the reality is that to make hydrogen, you need a lot of electricity, and in his case, a lot of green electricity, a lot of clean electricity, and he needs it cheap. Now, they've been trying to negotiate with companies for years now to try and get that price of the renewable energy at an affordable price. They haven't been able to do it. So this is a really is a double blow for the government and for Chris Bowen. I mean, Chris Bowen built this whole idea of a renewable energy superpower and the idea that we were going to be making lots and lots of green hydrogen. The business case for that is clearly not there. But he's also built it on the case that renewable energy is cheap. And this decision from Twiggy Forest shows us it is not cheap. It is hellish expensive. And while I'm talking about Twiggy Forest, by the way, because I know he's a listener, watcher of this program, Danita, I'm pretty certain. <laughs> can he also pull back on, the, on his plan for a wind farm in the upper Burdekin, in the tropical forests for, that is going ahead up there? Because let's just save those koalas, shall we, Twiggy, as well as save your business. Well, look, hopefully he's watching. You've delivered the message uh, loud and clear to him. There you go, uh, Nick Cater. Fingers crossed he gets that message loud and clear. Now, look, speaking of energy, the dim-witted Agriculture Minister Murray Watt claims nuclear energy threatens Australia's food production. He says there are more than 11,000 farms near the opposition's proposed reactor sites. Nick, I thought Labor was going to tone down on these scare campaigns, but apparently not. I'm your reporter on the spot for this one, Danita, because 150 kilometres down the River Danube that way is the Pox nuclear power station producing two gigawatts of power, which is making electricity very cheap here in Hungary. And the water that filters it comes into this river, right? The water that cools the Pox nuclear power station is just metres away from me. I can see no green-eyed fish. Uh, I can, in fact, there's a fisherman down there. I don't think he's caught anything, by the way. Uh, you know, this whole thing is a fantasy. I stood last week within 15 metres of a nuclear reactor, and on the way out of the building, I was tested, as they test everybody, and they told me that I would have had a higher radiation level if I'd taken a seven-hour flight from Sydney uh, to Indonesia, you know, so it's ridiculous. Now, before we let you go, Nick, European leaders and diplomats are reportedly in shock at the selection of J.D. Vance as Donald Trump's running mate. You're in Hungary at the moment, standing in front of a beautiful background there, but what's been the reaction to his appointment and will he be good for Europe? Well, he will be good for Europe, but amongst the European bureaucratic uh, elite, there has been absolute panic because... You know, he's not their kind of man. Like Donald Trump, he believes in nationalism for a start and the whole European project is built on doing away with borders. Uh, so he, he's really challenging their position. And he's, doing it, he's doing it from an intelligent place as well and that throws them out. But the really, th the really scary thing for them is that, that Vance, who has served in the US military, is saying to Europe, as Trump has been doing, you've got to pay for your own defence. You cannot rely on the United States all the time. Of course, the United States will be there in an emergency, but you cannot rely on us. You've got to start dicking, dipping your hands in your pocket and shelling out some more euros for your own army and your own defence force. And that is what's really chilling the Europeans, because at the end of the day, they'd rather have something than nothing. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. Nick Cater, great to speak with you as always. Thanks for joining us.